Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second part of the official Alien Disclosure series. Today, we're going to be looking at Oumuamua, the Pentagon's secret UFO research department, and invisible space blobs. Oumuamua. Avi Loeb the longest sitting chair of astronomy at Harvard, stated and continues to state that the extrasolar Oumuamua, which unironically means scout in Hawaiian, was of alien origin. This lump of space rock, as the official opposing argument called it at the time, in fact from 2017 until this year, entered our solar system from beyond. However, it didn't act like a normal piece of space rock. It accelerated and changed its trajectory. Nor did it look like one, as it was long and thin. It tumbled strangely, and it appeared to be made of some bright metal, something removed from artists' impressions portrayed in the media which made it look much more like, well, an elongated lump of space rock. But, earlier in 2021, scientific media started almost promoting Professor Loeb's extraterrestrial hypothesis, as if they'd all had a sudden change of heart regarding the giant alien scout ship. What is going on? Are we in fact coming close to a paradigm-shifting, Independence Day-esque revelation that we are not alone? Or, as some are suggesting, it's more that the powers that be can no longer hide this fact as UAPs and perhaps their occupants are becoming much more apparent and can no longer be swept under the rug? Or are we about to get shafted royally with another false flag event, removing even more of our traditional civil liberties. It's possible that this year's burst of public statements are actually a long time in the making. The Brooking Report really did believe that society, unprepared, would collapse upon encountering an alien civilization, or even just its remnant technologies on some ruin on Mars, as it would destabilise religious and cultural beliefs and norms. And they've had 60 years to change the general public's perception. In 2021, 65% of Americans said they believe in intelligent life beyond Earth. Decades ago, when the concept that the Abrahamic God created man alone was the norm, that number would have looked vastly different. Perhaps over half a century of Hollywood and television has helped to prepare humanity for what the powers that be already knew. In some ways they could say that they've been lying to us for our own good. We just weren't ready for it. You can't handle the truth. I, for one, am always happy when some self-appointed grey eminence makes life-altering decisions on my part. I hate having to think for myself, me. But is it really aliens? In a publicly staged interview with GQ magazine, Louis Elizondo, former head of the Pentagon's secret UFO programme, and the whistleblower who, cough, unofficially leaked the U.S. Nimitz Tic Tac UFO incident, stated that they, the U.S. government, have far more convincing evidence than what they have thus far released to the public. He also believes that they are in possession of exotic material. Interestingly, out of the 144 incidents which were studied and scrutinised, 143 could not be explained. Compare that to Project Blue Book's results. 701 
out of 12,618. However, of greatest interest are Elizondo's comments about humanity facing its next paradigm shift, just as we did when we discovered fire or when we discovered microbes. He hints heavily that microbes have always been here, yet we couldn't see them, and their biomass is far greater than the plant and animal kingdoms combined. In fact, his comments point less towards aliens being responsible for the publicly disclosed military UFO encounters than towards something from planet Earth. I would seriously recommend reading or watching the entire interview, plus GQ was cool. The interdimensional aspect was also covered in Jeremy Corbell's Hunt for the Skinwalker, regarding billionaire Bob Bigelow's then investigation into the anomalous events at the Sherman Ranch in Utah. The Fata Morgana cities, which appeared both there and also regularly in China, do suggest that UAPs may be visiting from much closer to home, a parallel dimension rather than from outer space. There are objects which do inhabit planet Earth, or at least its atmosphere, which do somewhat fit into this category. However, it is their wavelength on the visual spectrum rather than their dimension which separates them from us. It's possible that these critters, as Trevor James Constable termed them, giant amoeba-like blobs, were responsible for the mass radar sightings during World War II due to being visible in the microwave spectrum. Every so often, I personally hypothesize their presence becomes known when, for whatever reason, they fall to earth, causing anomalous blood rains such as in India or gardens filled with strange goo. Charles Ford investigated this phenomena a century ago and it still persists on occasion. If such immense creatures live side by side with us, yet are only visible in the infrared, ultraviolet or microwave areas of the visual spectrum, what other creatures, objects or even sentient beings could also be here? And brain theory provides an even more tantalising hypothesis that we live side by side with possibly infinite dimensions. Perhaps, for whatever reason, our dimensional neighbours have suddenly decided to start visiting. Perhaps they felt our atomic tests. Perhaps such horrific events affected their realities also, and they wanted to know what the chimps next door were up to this time. Perhaps our large hadron colliders have been punching too many holes in the membrane which separates our realities and they wanted to know where the sudden draft was coming from. There's definitely a suggestion from official sources, proof is even hinted at, that the interdimensional thing is where we should be looking. As Elizondo describes the situation, and I paraphrase, it's like locking the door and switching on the alarm before going to bed, but discovering muddy boot prints all through your living room in the morning. They're not, as yet, outwardly hostile, but they are a threat. As always, be free.